Hi there, this is Alfie Wattam, London's tech recruiter and the host of the London Technology Podcast. Uh, today I'm joined by Martin Hill. Uh, thanks for joining us, Martin. Could you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, Alfie. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm Martin. I've been in ad tech and martech for about 20 years. Um, I'm currently consulting. Um, I've been doing that for since about March. Um, but prior to that, I've worked for, I guess, a, a number of, of different ad tech companies, um, mainly in, in RTB uh, space, and then before that in kind of affiliate marketing, but, but mainly in online marketing across the advertiser side and the publisher side. Awesome. Okay. So you've been in the industry for a while, um, Martin, and now doing consulting. A lot of people that watch these videos, they're pretty new to the industry. They've just graduated in computer science or they're junior developers or whatever. What advice would you have for people that are just starting their tech you know, careers? Um, I think it's, it's a very good question. Uh, I mean, I, when I kind of got into the space, I, I guess I stumbled into ad tech really. Um, I actually started out doing computer systems for, for cinemas. Um, which was pretty interesting. And then I kind of moved into ad tech. Um, but I think it's, you know, it, that's probably not your traditional path. And I think what I tend to see and, and, and lots of the people that I have in my teams now, they tend to focus around a specific area that's of interest. You know, I think there's, there's a lot of full stack JavaScript that is, is becoming pretty popular right now. And that's pretty flexible. Um, but I think it's, it's really, you know, choose your niche or choose the area that you're interested in and and focus around that i mean i think you know if you're in london right now um i mean fintech's pretty big um but if you look at, at what you're going to need to get into those areas it's you know it's pretty java focused um and perhaps you know machine learning is is one of the new technologies that that's coming along so it's 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 find what you're interested and passionate about and then focus on those on those languages or those areas to to try and get your foot in the door. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you want to be as almost T shaped as possible when you start out to, to a degree. I, I completely um, agree. There's so many times where if I'm hiring a role, for example, a client wants X, Y and Z skill. They don't want A, B, C, D, E, you know, they don't want the whole alphabet of skills and becoming uh, really strong in a, just a couple of key areas obviously will uh, put you ahead, won't it, of, of the candidates that are just trying to do a little bit of everything and be a generalist. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's a difficult thing to do as well. I mean, you know, when I did, I guess, computer science and, and you know, the, the way it was taught back then was, was actually to learn a bit of everything, right? So, you know, doing all the different language types of, of, you know, I guess, functional languages, procedural languages, getting into object oriented and, and actually not, not specializing too much. And I think it was the year after me that, you know, suddenly it was Java only, right? So I did things like ML and Pascal and, 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 and I did a bit of Java as well, but, you know, and some C++. So I did a, a wide variety and then, and then everybody, started to just focus and and that was partly because you know if you're a java programmer you're going to find a lot of work these days right i mean that, that's highly popular but there are a few languages where that's the case and so it's pretty easy to slip into those if you if you kind of want a, a let's say a long career in in programming right where those skills are going to be um in demand across various different industries so that's that's obviously a, a an interesting route to go. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if we were to look into the future, Martin, into your crystal ball, um, are there any technologies? I mean, it could be in, in ad tech, but it could be outside of that. But is there any tech or, or tools or ideas that, that you're passionate about that you think will have a big impact on, on the future ahead? Um, I mean, I, 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 the, the skill that I probably have most is problem solving, right? So it's kind of, you know, getting involved, understanding a problem and then designing something and, and building it to, to solve that specific need. And I think, you know, in 20 years, it's always been around automation of some kind, right? It's, it's looking for tasks 
that people are doing that they don't really need to do you know i think back in in the early part of my career i, I one of the things that i span up was a business intelligence team and and back then you know you you had a lot of people in other teams who were just running reports a lot you know they'd come in in the morning and they'd spend the first two to three hours of their day running a report now i just questioned why do you need to be wasting all that time you know there was 30 40 people in the team every day wasting two to three hours when you could automate that stuff and it yeah. could be in their inbox before they come into work at 9 a.m mm -hmm. so it's looking for those kinds of efficiencies and 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 automating and you know move forward 20 years and and it's still exactly the same right you still have the same problems but you know now we're in areas where you know certainly in ad tech you know you're, you're looking at real-time bidding, you're looking at streams of data that are billions of transactions, you know, a day. Um, and, and you've got to, to automate as much of, of, I guess, filtering, reporting on that kind of stuff, tweaking settings to shape campaigns in different areas. So it's, it's automation of a different type and at a different scale, but really that's, that's evolved into machine learning, right? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the ad tech industry has been brilliant at, at overstating what it does. Like if you listen to some of the companies, you'll hear, you know, AI, everybody's doing AI. And, you know, yeah. that, that's a load of rubbish. Nobody's really doing AI. Yeah. I think, you know, the, the best that people are doing is advanced algorithms slash machine learning. Right. I think that's the, the marketers take that and turn it into something a, a little bit more advanced, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, but that's the interesting place to be right now, I think getting into you know data science is moving forward and and machine learning is is that place to be right now i think yeah no absolutely you made a really good point around automation as well i mean it's um it's only tapped the surface of what what it could be um I, even i'm trying to figure out ways in my personal life to start to automate things i've i've recently hooked up my alexa to my coffee machine so in the morning i can um, just ask it to uh, to do it and it will start making it um so um it's got massive applications, not just in the, in the business world, but in, um, in our coffee world as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's actually something that I was looking at a while ago. I, I got my whole team kind of yeah. this like Udemy for business uh, subscription and, and started pushing them to really look at, let's say, all the things that you could do with AWS, right? Yeah. I think, you know, obviously being on, well, everyone's shifted or shifting to cloud and there's, there's just a whole array of things that you can do um, and learning exactly what you've just described that that kind of using uh, what is it called poly i think is the the aws service where you can kind of create your own tasks and hook it up to alexa and all that is is, is really interesting stuff so it's actually you know that in itself is a little skill set of you know breaking down a problem you know it, making it work is the first case it doesn't necessarily need to be perfection like don't let perfection get in the way of of good and working i mean many times people sort of say you know what good good code is working code right you can yeah. you know you don't want to create a code debt but you've got to make it work and and actually using all the pieces available at your disposal is is a really good way to to do that and don't be worried about you know you don't have to build everything it's 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 making sure that you use the available components and, and and solve the problem right and that's, that's always the beneficial way to do things awesome well thank you so much martin for taking the time to get your your ideas and insights that was really useful um i'll uh, tag you on linkedin when this comes out in a, in a few days so people can reach out and drop you a line if they've got questions but thanks again for your time and uh, thank you to everybody for watching